Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can all hear me. Welcome to our webinar, How to Survive and Thrive in this crisis. Could, uh, I, can see, I can see in the chat a few of you now saying uh, you can hear me. And I can hear you, Mark. It's fine. Good. As long as you can hear yeah, me. Yeah, I, I can hear you. Yeah. That's okay. So uh, good to see you all. Thank you very much for joining. For those of you that don't know me, my name is um, Mark Dilks. I'm the Managing Director of Action Coach here in Milton Keynes, Bedford, Northampton, and the surrounding areas as well. Wow. These are unprecedented times that we're all finding ourselves in. Um, and I guess the first thing to say is, aside, aside of our businesses um, and all of the concerns that, that we all have about them, the most important thing, no doubt, that, that we're all thinking about is our families, our friends and our loved ones. So, and of course, it's absolutely natural to be worrying about them at this time. But one of the important things that we can do for them at this time is to plan and to take decisive actions for our business. So in this session, we're going to show you how you can do that for your business, for your family, for your community and the love, loved ones and the people who are around you. Okay, so let's get into that. So there are um, lots of different businesses of different sizes and different age in terms of startups and very long standing businesses in between. Um, so there should be something on here for everybody. We hope you can all take something away from this session. Um, there are three main themes in this webinar. The, um, the first one is around leadership and the way that we take action for our community and the people that we serve, the customers that we have, our teams. The next one is around uh, managing the finances of our business, and that's going to be absolutely critical for us uh, and for all of our businesses as we go forward. And the final part is the tactics that we take as well. So the actions that we take in our business. And, and at that moment, I'd like to introduce you also to my colleague, Mark Miller, who's also a, a business growth specialist here at, at Action Coach. You probably saw, saw Mark moving the slides to and fro. I think we're pretty well on, the, on it now. We've got um, three topics for you. Uh, we've done some number of uh, webinars ourselves, research um, around various documents that have been coming into all of us uh, recently. So what we've done is we've summarized it all into these 20 essential steps, which we hope are, are useful for all of us. And we've categorized them under these three headings so that these three headings are the, the main priority for all of us to focus on um, as business owners. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, let's, get, let's get going. Great, thanks Mark. So yeah, 20 steps today. They're not meant to be sequential in any way at all. Uh, each of the steps that we're going to share with you has probably got three subsections in it. So in total, there's up to 60 things that you can take away, 60 specific actions that we're going to share with you in the next hour that you can take away and implement in your business right away. Um, I can see that you're all up and running now with chat, or a lot of you are already. We're not going to open the line up for conversation on this call today, but we are aware that some of you will have questions. So if there's things that you want to ask in terms of questions as we go along, please raise them in the, um, in the chat. Sorry, you'll, you'll notice I keep looking to my right hand side. It's because I'm looking at my computer, by the way. So let's move that a bit more central. So, um, I'll be looking there from time to time for your chat questions, okay? So raise your questions there. Somebody has asked, uh, are the slides, Sharon, welcome Sharon, um, asking if the slides will be emailed out. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be putting them um, somewhere, probably up on the Facebook group, uh, and you can be able to download them from there. Certainly the video will be on our YouTube channel and we'll be sharing it widely on social as well. So let's just come into that. That tees up very nicely. Thank you, Sharon. Um, thank you for prompting that. Um, look, the most important thing is right now is we're here to help you. Okay. 
and there's lots of different ways that we can do that. This is not a sell. We're not trying to pitch anything. We just want to reach out to the community, to the business community around us, and to give you all the help and support that you're going to need to get through the next few months. So four main ways in which we'd like to offer that to you right now. The first is um, our Facebook group. Um, that's an open group now. You can find it on Facebook at Action Coach Milton Keynes, Bedford and Northampton. And you can see the URL is there as well. So Action Coach Growth Hub. We're going to be putting a lot of resources and updates. We already have been over the last week. It's a very dynamic and fluid situation. But there'll be a lot of resources up there that we'll be posting over the next few weeks. So make sure that you go and join that group and get the help and support that you need in the first instance from there. The next thing that we're going to do is to really encourage you to plan really hard over the next uh, next few weeks. Plan, plan, plan. You won't be able to plan enough. Okay, so don't panic. Plan. We'd like to facilitate that for you. And the way that we'd like to do that is to offer you a complimentary 90 day planning webinar. But this is a fast moving feast. So we're doing all of this quickly. Uh, we've scheduled to run a planning webinar for next Tuesday afternoon. Um, I'll send out the registration details for that separately. So it's next Tuesday at 1.30 and we'll be running a planning webinar for you so that you can go and make some concrete plans for your business for the next 90 days. We will also run this webinar weekly, okay? And we'll be providing regular updates. You know, the world has changed even in a week. You think about where we were one week ago, a week ago, we were waiting for the Chancellor to make his announcement. He made a 30 billion pound package of support. Five days later, he increased that package of support tenfold. So it's a very fast paced and dynamic situation. It will get stable again, but it could go faster before it slows down. So please come and join us on that webinar next Thursday as well. And the fourth thing, fourth thing I'd like to offer you is um, in addition to all of that other support, you know, this will not just be a sticking plaster that kind of fixes everything. There's going to be some specific things for your business that you're going to need to discuss. So um, we will be putting onto our homepage, onto miltonkeens.actioncoach.co.uk, links to our diaries. And we will offer you, we will make available to you um, some short, quick fire sessions where you can come and jump on a call with us, come and jump on a Zoom with us and treat it like a surgery. Okay, so if there's something that's on your mind, it's specific to your business and you want to know how to specifically implement some of the things that we've shared with you, then book one of those sessions and come and get some help from us on a one-to-one -one basis. Okay. So that's the support. We'll recap that and we'll refer to that again as we kind of go through this call. Absolutely. Yeah. That's good. All right, so. Into the list. Into the list, yeah. So, so why 90 day plan? So look, there's been some great news that's come out of China today. Um, so based on what the news, what, what's being reported, you know, it looks, like, it looks like they've managed to get through the health part of this crisis in, in about three months. It started in the middle of December, right? Um, from what I understand, they've reported no new cases in the last 24 hours. So it looks like they've got it under control. It looks like we're in about a three month health crisis. Um, so today, as I said, is a start of a package to get us through those next, those next 90 days. But there will be an economic, ongoing economic uh, impact. And um, we need to be here and ready to thrive as that economy starts to come back again in, in about 90 days time. Okay, so it's about getting through the next, getting through the next 90 days and then being a fit and strong place to be able to go forwards um, 30, uh, 90 days from now. Okay, so um, with that. Before you move in, Mark. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna move now into these uh, 20, 20 essential steps and 20 tips. Each has got three. Um, and again, you, you, uh, more, part of my job in doing this is as well as helping Mark with the, with the content is, is I'm, I'm watching the clock. So uh, part of the competition here is to figure out what, what, what kind of signals have I got <laughs> arranged with Mark to move <laughs> us on. We do have, we do have a code, but um, we'll give a prize out, a bottle of wine to somebody who spots what the code is. 
Um, so Mark, now ready on to point number one. There's 20 things we're going to go through. We're going to share these between us. And on to point number one of the 20 and the most primary thing. So I'll kick off on this. We've got about a minute or two on each slide as we're going through, as you can see from the time. So we'll do it very, very quick. Um, I've been involved in uh, corporates for, for a long, long time now and uh, coaching and educating people even uh, way up to, to a senior exec position. But one thing I've noticed, you probably noticed, is the whole culture of the business, certainly if you're a one-person business, the whole culture is down to the way we feel about ourselves. So tip number one is this, be very, very determined as a priority to take personal care, obviously your family too, but personal care of yourself. I've put down, or we've put down body, mind and spirit there. You can think of things such as setting personal goals, setting personal goals for education, setting personal goals for fitness, using the time that we've got to focus on personal improvement in skills, capability and health. That attitude filters its way down through everything that we do. That's where it starts. If we're worried about ourselves, we will be worried about the business. If we're not concerned for ourselves, we won't show the concern for the business. That's point number one, uh, personal care. Let's move on to point number two. Thanks, Mark. So point number two is all about your leadership. So you will need to show leadership to absolutely everybody around you right now. You know, many people are feeling very fearful right now. A lot of people are panicking. And actually what they're, what they're doing is looking for leadership and this is your opportunity to show people leadership. So it's your opportunity as a business owner to kind of stand out in your community. <clears throat> so in addition to being really kind of compassionate to people and showing your personal concern, you'll also need to show a lot of strength and conviction right now. People will be looking to you, either your staff, your customers, and just your general community, your suppliers around you. You need to take your leadership and you need to show that with strength and conviction. You need to be visible. You know, people need to see you. You cannot lead from your office and behind your desk. You need to be out. You need to be talking to people. People need to see you. You need to be touching, not physically. You need to be metaphorically touching people um, and getting in front of people and speaking to people on a direct basis. Okay, however you need to do that. And if it's by webinar or by chat, great, do that. So Mark, if I can say this, uh, if you look at the bottom point there, everybody, is on the role model thing. I can't stress this enough. Uh, people mimic uh, each other quite a lot. So if you're a person who is taking initiative, looking to build rather than retreating, the natural thing to do at the moment is retreat and hunker down. And if you can take initiative and build, people will follow. That, that is what people need at this time. And as a, a very brave group anyway, there's very few people have the courage to start a business, run out and be solo. That, that itself, isn't it, Mark, is a really, really big test of character. Most people I work with in corporates over the last 20 years stay within a large structure. You've been adventurous enough to go on your own. So there's a huge amount of, of bravery already. And as we indicate bravery and initiative for the future and leadership, people will warm to that and they will follow that. They need direction, they need certainty. So after personal care, the next thing is I am gonna take initiative and be proactive and be seen to be confident. And you may not feel it day on day, but it's a mindset that is determined to, to get these ingredients in place. Absolutely, Mark. You know, and, and to add to that, you know, doing that in a really positive can-do way, you know, be decisive, don't panic, don't be seen to be panicking. You may be panicking inside, it's completely understandable. But the thing that you need to do is to plan to take decisive action. Yeah, if you're not taking decisive action, then you're not taking control of the situation, okay? So make a plan. It may be a fluid plan, but take decisive action and show people that you are being decisive and that you're getting, you're accepting the situation and you're getting on and making stuff happen, okay? Good, all right, point number three. You know, this is quite an interesting one. Everything happens in cycles, especially when you look at things through the, um, if you kind of frame this from an economist's perspective. Um, so although this is kind of from a kind of a macroeconomic point of view, you know, something that's just kind of this, this isn't a normal economic shock. It's come as a consequence of a virus, right? Nobody could have predicted that that was coming. Think about where we all were globally from an economic standpoint three months ago. We were in a really strong place. You know, the British economy was strong and stable. The US economy was absolutely flying. Okay, the, the European economy wasn't quite so great, but actually things were pretty good. So underlying demand is there. 
also bear in mind that we are in an election year in the United States, okay? Trump is not gonna wanna go to the polls at the end of this year with a weak economy. He's gonna do everything he possibly can to uh, get his economy strong. So will Boris, he's just been elected. He's just announced an enormous package of aid, okay? So, so everything happens in cycles. Everything is very cyclical. So let's just kind of frame that, if you like, um, in terms of the seasons. Think of it as summer, autumn, winter, and spring. So if you think about the kind of the strong period that we've had as being, um, being the summer, you know, summer has just come to a very abrupt end in the last week. And we have suddenly had a very sharp frost in the autumn, yeah? What do we do in the autumn? We prune back our, back our trees, okay? Now is the time to prune back your business, if you like. And you need to kind of contain things. You need to get it ready for some pretty sharp frosts that are going around right now, okay? Yeah, if, if I could suggest something. Um, this awareness of cycles gives us a calmness. And we can say to staff that if we have people working for us, and we can say to ourselves if we're on our own, there is just a natural up and down about life. I would love it to be on the growth all the time. We set these great business plans, don't we? To, to grow, 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 grow. And, and we just get disappointed at times like this. You can be calm and take a big, big step back and understand the seasons and the cycles. Um, sure, we've got tough decisions, but it just calms us down a little. And we communicate that calmness out uh, to our clients and also to the people that work with us. So understanding that things go up and down in itself you meant seven to ten years, you mentioned that one, Mark, when you put that on the Yeah, slide. typically, economically, a bit financially, things happen in economic terms in cycles of about seven to ten years. We've just come to the end of one. Yeah. Um, so so back, back to that analogy of the seasons. Um, look, we had a very short autumn. We are quickly getting into winter. Winter is, you know, we've had an autumn of about a week to 10 days. You know, we are now in a, we are getting into a pretty hard winter. What's been pretty uncertain until that news came out of China is we didn't know how, how long winter was gonna be. Now, I'm not saying, and I'm certainly, and I don't claim to be an expert in terms of what's happening on the health side in China, and there's a whole discussion around that. But um, you know, from their experience, we may start to think that in health terms, winter could be probably 90 to 120 days long, okay? So we need to be thinking about our business, about how we're going to get through that winter period. But as sure as anything, what we do know is that spring will follow winter. There will be a recovery, okay? So we need to be kind of making sure that we're getting the garden ready for when spring comes as well, okay? And we're going to come on to that in some much more detail in a second. All right, good. Number four. Um, one of the companies I'm working with at the moment is a, a French construction company. They have people all over the world, and of course, they're all now working from home. And one of the things they're rightly stressing is that communication to the people that work with us, if, uh, if we have people working with us, um, is, is absolutely paramount. This is actually a really good opportunity, and I, I run a couple of other companies, and we've been stressing again and again and again, frequent conversations. It doesn't have to be about work, but if people are now is more isolated and uh, more detached working from home, for example, uh, less, less uh, close contact, then de deciding on a communication policy for your business, if you have people working with you, is fundamentally important. We'll get on to communicating with clients in a second, but also communicating with suppliers. Anybody linked with you, People will be grateful for contact. You have an, an almost amount of credits given us if we take initiative and contact. I rang a, a client, an older client um, yesterday. How are you was the conversation. It turned within 15 minutes, it turned into, can you do this for me, Mark? Can, you, can your business do that? So people respond to being communicating, uh, communicated with, sorry. Set up a communications policy, that's what I would suggest, Mark. Good, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mark. So Mark mentioned external communication. So absolutely, you know, first and foremost, um, you need to get out, you need to talk to people, you need to talk to your customers, and you need to do that in a very proactive way. You need to do that, though, in a way that you first and foremost, and above everything else, show concern and compassion for them. You know, talk to them on a human and personal level. You know, show, con show concern. How are you? How are your families? How are you doing? Is everything okay? Do you have everything you need? How can I help you? 
reach out, support people, be compassionate. On the next level, then, you know, be current and relevant. You know, from a marketing communications point of view, I'm still seeing stuff all over social media yeah, that, is, that is totally out of step out of with where people are. You know, people are not communicating and being relevant. And, you know, that is really starting to jar now. Now, at the same time, you know, I don't know about you, but my inbox has been kind of filled with all sorts of stuff over the last few days around, um, around communication around the crisis. And some of that's starting to kind of wear a bit thin now in terms of, you know, just simple things about hygiene, discipline and stuff like that. A lot of businesses, okay, yeah, you need to do that. But it's kind of becoming a bit of a given already. So, yeah. but do also, yeah, absolutely. You need to get out and you need to tell people what you are doing to adapt. Now, we will be moving our entire business onto webinar. We have to do that. We have to adapt because we're not going to be able to be in contact with people for the next few weeks. Okay. So we need to communicate that. We need to tell people and doing things like this will, will help that. But at the same time, you need to be flexible and show support, right? You know, your current customer base are the people that you need to keep and have with you as you go forward. So do everything you can to support, be flexible, and keep your customer base with you over this next next uh, few weeks. In fact, this is a really important slide, I just wonder if I could add something uh, again to what Mark is saying. Um, my suggestion would be focus, forget selling, and focus on connecting. That's it. Because what will happen, uh, the more that you connect in the time of a crisis, you have a strategy of connection. You possibly have got some time spare now because you can't go visit that you, you didn't have before. What do I do? Do I plan the business? Do I do the finances? Yes, absolutely. But one of the priorities is this. Plan to communicate. Pick up the phone, webinars, whatever other mechanisms, emails, but not with selling material. Don't communicate with, uh, by the way, we've got this offer on or this offer on. The primary purpose of communication at the moment is to show that we're reliable, we care, we're concerned, engage in conversation and people will buy because people want to keep the connection going, which is what happened to me yesterday. I wasn't selling anything. In fact, I actually apologized to this, this person. I said, I'm really sorry to be talking about work. And she said, it's okay, it's okay. We can talk about it because I need to solve this particular problem. Mm -hmm. And she bought uh, a, a raft of stuff which uh, arose out of a conversation simply of communication. Um, the flexibility thing is this, as you're talking to your customers and showing concern, ask them what is on their mind at the moment as far as their, their business, their work life is concerned. They will tell you what they will buy from you and our flexibility will enable us to adjust what we offer to them. They probably won't ask you for what you are selling now, but they will give you hints and tips about what they are likely to buy and you can think, I can change a little bit and maybe give them that. That's why the word flexibility is there. Get people to talk, look for gaps in what they are, they're experiencing what they want, and begin to adjust what you're offering. That's what we're Great, thanks, Mark. And I guess the thing, the only thing to add to that, and, and you're right, this is a key slide. Um, you cannot over communicate enough right now. Hmm. Do not think that you are over communicating. Absolutely. Double, at least double any communications level that you had right. previously. You know, and try if you can to do that in as personal a way as you possibly can. If that means being on the phone late into the, you know, into the night, talking to people, checking out people, how they are, understanding how you can connect, make the building supporting relationships, people will remember you for that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Number six. Number six, diversify. Guys, the landscape has completely changed. Um, there has been a total paradigm shift. Okay, anything that we thought was normal before is now completely, completely different. So you need to think about how your business will shift to. Um, you need to look at your offer and um, you need to think really hard about how you can revise the offer that you used to have to make it relevant to the circumstances that we have today. Yeah, so, you know, we have several clients that are, that are absolutely thriving in this environment right now because they have adapted their offer and um, have made it relevant to the circumstances that we all we all now find ourselves in. And they've done some very specific things. You know, um, they a lot of them have, have got very smart very quickly about their online offer. 
Um, and we're going to talk about that a bit more in a second. One, co one company we know has made a huge effort for home contact, home delivery, and, and home, um, home uh, communication, home connection. Absolutely. Uh, and, and invested in recruiting staff that will help um, physically contact their customers if customers aren't coming to them anymore. I'll give you another short, very short example. Um, one of the other businesses I run, I bet you <laughs> I'm so pleased, is an events-based company. So that's like March, April, May, wiped out. Absolutely no income from it. What do we do? And it's a question of changing what we do. Of course, we're going the predictable way, which is, right, we're banging into online stuff, but we're really giving people an option of an alternative way of doing it. It requires a change in mindset and a willingness to diversify. Immediately, you see the opportunity. Don't spend a long time analyzing it. Try it. If it doesn't work, try something else. Don't try and get it right. Just start changing, test it. If it doesn't work, change it, try something else. Keep nimble and diversify. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the key here, although there's been a paradigm shift in the kind of the, um, the macro environment, you know, we now need to understand where the pain point of our potential customers has moved to. Mm. You know, the economic engine will still continue to roll on. Mm. Yeah. So the pain has just moved from one place to somewhere else. And, and what you need to be looking at is understanding where that new pain point is mm -hmm. and then think about how you can go about solving those issues. Now, look, I don't want to, I don't want to try and hoodwink anybody. Okay. Let's be honest and transparent. There will be some businesses that, and yeah, a few businesses are going to struggle to adapt. Let's be honest. Let's be pragmatic about that. Okay, let's realize that, okay, our business may just not be relevant right now. Okay, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But there are mm -hmm. other businesses that are thriving right now. Mm -hmm. So just think about how you can adapt, how you can change your offer and do something slightly different because there is opportunity. And some businesses that we are talking to on a daily basis are doing incredibly well. Okay. Apparently, I heard today, Mark, that, that the demand for plumbers has gone through the roof. <laughs> Because people are staying at home. People are home. Sort of thing. So it, it is surprising how you get the, the, the beneficiaries as well as the hard ones. Hard times. Good. All right. Let's move on. Let's keep it going. So the next thing, understand your customer's journey. What do we mean by that? You know, we used to talk a lot about customer's journey. So what I mean by that is know where your sales pipeline is. Know who is thinking of buying from you and know where mm. they are in their decision-making process. Mm. Typically, when we look at customer journeys, there are three main steps you know, in the decision-making process. The first is having some awareness that they have, that there is a problem and that they need to solve it. The next one is around consideration. What is the solution that I am thinking of buying? Mm -hmm. And the final one is decision. Know where your customers are in that, in that decision-making process. Yeah? Make sure you're talking uh, on an ongoing way with the people that are at the decision level. Yeah? But think of it in funnel terms. You still need to be putting people back in the top of that funnel. Yeah, as you, and then moving people down, down through that. So in addition to knowing where people are in, in that sales pipeline and making sure that you're focusing on having conversations with the right people, also know where your customers are in the buyer's cycle. Yeah, so yeah, know how long it takes for people to make a buying decision from you. I spent a few years in the, the tire industry and I often use this as an example. You know, there are two ways of buying tires. It's either a planned purchase and you buy a tire or a set of tires probably every, every couple of years, or you have a very much a distress purchase. You go out to your car in the morning, you have a puncture. <laughs> that is a very distressed, short buying um, cycle. Pe people are in that window for a very short period of time. So what is your buying cycle, or your customer's buying cycle, and know where your customers are in that journey. The next thing is know how many leads that you are going to need to generate to, um, to push people down that funnel. Know, where, um, know what you need to do to continue to generate leads and have an ongoing conversation, all right? Can I add something, Mark? There's a visual aid here coming out. The technology here is unbelievable. I got a paper and a pen. I actually learned how to write recently, having been keyboard based most of the time. I don't know if you can see that, but there's your funnel with awareness, consideration, and decision. And one of the tricks, we'll get a little bit later on uh, into marketing, but one of the tricks in marketing is to provide 
information to your potential customer base that will move them from one position to the next, bring them down the funnel. So firstly, how do we raise awareness, definite awareness material? How do we get them to consider us? What, are we, what is different about us, which could be case studies, it could be examples, it could be customer stories. And then it's the decision, what's the ROI of buying from us? So uh, some examples of the gains and the benefits. These could be videos, they could be brochures. My point is, at this mark, if you don't mind me saying, is we probably have time now to produce more materials. In the next two, three months, there'll be time you think, what should I do? Contact customers, do the marketing. Write more case studies, get more customer quotes, get more videos made, get more stuff that's going to move people down this funnel, and you'll be set up to take advantage as the, as the term starts to come back. Use this time to produce. Absolutely, yeah. Going to touch on that point again in a minute. Right, let's keep the ball rolling. So the next one, cash. Cash is king, right? Cash is the king in your business. If you haven't got a cash flow forecast right now for your business, get one now, today. Go and get one. It is your number one priority. Mm. Get a cash flow forecast. There's a lot of tools out there that you can use. Um, the two that spring immediately to mind that I know, one is Zero, and I know that some of our clients who are on the call are using Zero yes. already. Free agent. Right. Yeah, Float is another good one that I use and I, I particularly like. If you don't have a cash flow forecast, um, another place you can go is to build one in Excel. Yeah. Mm. If you need a template for how to build a cash flow forecast in Excel, let me know. I yeah. will send one to you. Absolutely. Okay. Get a cash flow forecast and track it daily. Reconcile your bank. Know what's going out. Know what's coming in. You know, the number one thing you do when you sit down to work in the morning, it could be at the dining room table if you're working from home now, many of us will be. Sit down, reconcile the bank, check the cash, do the cash flow forecast, understand where your customers are at, understand what your likely future revenue is going to look like. Okay, it's your number one thing. And then, and then what I would also add is, in addition to being on top of your numbers, have a forecast. Okay, have some scenarios, mm, have absolutely. a low, medium, and high absolutely. scenario. You know, what does the worst case scenario look like? What is the best case scenario? Absolutely, Mark. I was going to add something there. I, perhaps it's my psychology, and I, uh, but it's helped me through the years, is facing any situation, I work out and face a worst case scenario. Uh, and work, when you work out that worst case scenario financially with cash flow, then figure out a plan, because there's always a plan, to survive that worst case. It hugely takes the pressure off. Because that planning time in facing the worst case is sobering, but also the design of a solution is very creative, but it leaves you with a security that, look, even if this happens, I know what I'm gonna do. So facing worst case is very powerful, yeah. and there's usually a plan to work through it. If uh, you're facing your worst case and you want ideas, again, as we get on later, call us, let's have a conversation, and we'll help produce a plan that makes you feel, okay, I can get through this worst case. And that makes a big difference to confidence. Absolutely. And I'll just, I guess you're all watching the chat as this is going along. I'm trying to keep an eye on it. Some brilliant comments from, uh, from Mark Holland and from Michael Roberts. Guys, thanks for continuing to contribute. Sam also. Um, amen, Mark Holland says. Cash is king. Cash flow planning removes fear. Absolutely yeah, it right, does. it does. It right, does. Mark? Yeah. Absolutely right, it does. Yeah. You know, we're all sitting at home at the moment worrying about the numbers. We're worrying about the things that are coming in. We're worrying about the money that's going to be going out. Yeah, and we're probably doing these financial gymnastics that are keeping us awake at three o'clock in the morning. Do a plan. Sit down, write a plan, get it all down, and it'll take your fear and your worry away. Yeah, you can see what's coming ahead and you can plan and track and manage for it. And that, that point's going to tie into some of the things that we've got coming up, uh, some of the points that we're going to cover. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's move on. Number nine. Number nine is manage your debtors. Yeah. So the first part of managing your debtors is have a debtor system. Yeah. You all have a bunch of a bunch of invoices that are out there right now that you're waiting to have paid. You know, people are now all working from home. It's going to be difficult to uh, access um, payment systems and stuff like that for people that are generally office based. You know, your 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 clients. So. Make sure you are talking to your debtors regularly. Stay on top of your outstanding invoices, follow people up, talk to people, uh, understand when people are um, 
are going to pay you. Now have proper conversations about um, when you expect to get those invoices paid. The next point is make sure that you're tracking those conversations. Yeah? Track your outstanding payments and keep records of the conversations that you're having with people. Yeah? So make sure that, that you are not only on top of what's outstanding, but that you are on top of the conversations that you're having with people to recover that money as well. All right. the, the middle bullet there, uh, Mark, just to, to remind everybody, it says discounts. Just, just do things. Look at your cash flow first and think if I really need the cash in, it may be worth incentivizing your debtors to pay you by giving some kind of discount. Think creatively about that. And the other bullet there, Mark, as we said this morning, be very cautious at the moment about how you take on new debt. There's some really good deals, and if we're gonna go later, it may be worth thinking of actually raising debt at this time. Mm. But be cautious about how, how you raise new debt and how that debt can be repaid and how you can collect. So, um, so be smart on that, but think of discounts and, and collect it in. Yeah, and, and Mark says also back to back to cash flow. Uh, he's now sleeping fine, so that's good. Now, good news, Mark. Now that you've got your cash flow yeah, under well control, done, well yeah, done, Mark. Good. Great, great example. So that, that's good. good. That's good. Right, moving on. Um, Mark, controlling spending. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's me. Um, the uh, a conversation I've had uh, with with one of the business of running uh, the events company uh, with a co-director in that business is the difference between cost control and investment. And I said to Mark, I'd like to flag and like to start this, this quick slide as we move quickly through the rest, um, that a very fundamental thing to do is not let go of the investment mentality, but be aware of a difference between an investment and a cost. Don't just cut everything, but think actually, for example, staff uh, training and uh, marketing itself are investments that are still costing money. So be very, very clear. A cost is something that we can cut with minimal long-term effect. Investment is something we put money in because we want a long-term effect and have a very aggressive investment strategy and a clear difference in your head as a, as a business owner between the difference between cost and investment is what I would say. Good, absolutely, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. We need to be investing for, you know, for that using when that metaphorical spring comes back in, in three or four months time, we need to be investing now ready for when that happens, okay? Good, all right, moving on, number 11. So, so uh, thinking about repeat business, yeah? How are we gonna get, get the customers that we already have to buy more from us? Yeah. The customers are, uh, the current customer base is, is the best source, isn't it? It's, it's, at times like this, we consolidate, we, we, we get hold and we get close up to the customers that we, uh, we are familiar with. Uh, I'll go back to the example again, just because it happened yesterday, bringing an old customer, having a how are you chat and work comes through this. So do make sure that you're building something very important with current customers, uh, which will lead to repeat business, uh, and that is trust. Look at the customer base. I would suggest a trust rating. Look at your current customer base. Quickly write them down and say, what is the level of trust I have with this person? It's usually high, which is great because they're current customers. But then think, how do I increase the level of trust with each of these particular clients that I've already got? Work hard on the current customer base at the moment on the trust element, which could be adding value, giving suggestions, how are you, work on that, and then repeat business will begin to be part of your uh, solution in this situation. Absolutely, and you know, customers are hard to win at any time, right? Absolutely. You know, we've all worked hard for the customer bases that we've got, so we need to do everything we can to keep them right now. So you know, work hard on your customers, look to do what you can to keep your existing customer base, because that's what will carry you through when that metaphorical springtime comes in, in three or four months. Now. I wrote something down here, which I forgot to say. People will not forget you if you are there in a crisis. Mm. If we are absent from our current customers because we're too busy and we're, we're frantically dealing with this, they will feel that absence uh, and they will gravitate to people who do communicate. So people will not forget us if we're there for them now. If we can't contact them now, we'll have friends for life. Absolutely not. Good, all right. Uh, the next one, be smart with credit. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, as we said earlier, cash is king. You know, cash may start to dry up a little bit. So what contingency places, uh, plans have we got in place for when that happens? Cash is currently still available. Cash has been extremely mm. cheap. Absolutely. Sources of credit. Have I heard been this morning of something I don't know, guys, you may know more than me at the moment, but I heard something this morning about government guarantees of interest on loans or stuff that is being announced. Mm. So 
as well with taking that deposit, yeah you know. yeah absolutely so you know we've had that big announcement of 330 million quid that was announced uh, back on tuesday by the by the chancellor you know that there are things out there that you can go and do right now there are the, the business loans i think they're to about ten thousand pounds and i understand that you'll be applying for those through the local banks uh, will be managing the administration of that process if you're in the retail and hospitality sector there are also the grants i think up to twenty five thousand pounds some of you may have seen if you're in the facebook group um facebook themselves announced yesterday a hundred million pound uh, fund um, which can be applied for or you can register for it the links on the Facebook group but you can go and register now and they will be doing two things they'll be um, making direct funding grants available and they are also making available advertising credits okay free advertising credits um, which is gonna, that, that talks to a point that, that we're going to come to yeah give us, a, give us a call if you need more information on that and the other thing that Mark said uh, to me yesterday, which was a very smart thing to say, which is uh, not very usual for Mark, but he came up with something very, very smart yesterday. And uh, the, the smart thing he said was um, that the tactic of getting as many credit lines open for yourself as possible, and I think it's a really good point, mm -hmm. is, is making you feel that, look, worst case, I could go down this credit line or this credit line or this credit line. Now's the time to have as many credit cards as you can. Not use them, but have them there. Absolutely. So if you have those doors, you can go through worst case. Again, it takes the pressure off us. Yeah, yeah. So what we're not encouraging you to do is to get into lots of debt right now. Absolutely not. We're, we're not encouraging you to do that. What we are encouraging you to do is to get options. Absolutely. Okay? So, so go and open up lines of credit yeah. whilst you still can so that um, if you need them, you can draw on them and they will get you through. Look, look, the number one kind of you know game basically right now, the number one play, if you like, is to make sure that we get through this hard winter, that we're calling it metaphorically, so that when springtime comes, we're back in the game, right? That, that's what it's all about. Um, so you've just got to get through the next three or four months. If that means having lines of credit open now that you can leverage if you need them to get you to the point where you're back in the game in the spring, then, um, then that's what we need to do. Okay? Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Good. All right. So the next one is think about your tax liabilities. Okay, mm. I saw a great thing on the news this morning, actually. Uh, it was a feature, um, some of you may have seen it, uh, in a hotel. Okay. And actually, the, uh, the owner of the hotel had unfortunately been on hold for about an hour to HMRC. And the interviewer said, what are you doing? And she said, I'm letting HMRC know that I won't be paying my national insurance and PAYE contributions for all of my employees um, this month. Mm -hmm. So look, this is all about uh, not saying default on your tax, not saying do anything that's inappropriate. But what I am saying is talk to HMRC because they will be willing to, to help and support Absolutely. right now. Yeah, I had a conversation with uh, my accountant a couple of days back, the beginning of the week, and there will be a he believes there'll be a, quite a bit of um, flexibility. I'm sure you're way ahead of this, uh, probably more ahead than, than we are on this, in terms of talk to the accounts and find out about what kind of flexibility there may be. There will be a lot of, a uh, lot more, let's say sympathy. If we can get a period of sympathy from the tax department from HMRC, Mark, that'd be amazing. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, right. <laughs> so, so talk to your accountant, talk to the government, talk to the authorities. And the other thing is make sure that you build in your tax liabilities into your cash flow forecast. Yeah, they're not gonna go away. They're not just gonna be written off. By Hey, don't say never right now. Never say never in this situation, right? Because we don't actually know what's going to happen. But, you know, plan, plan, now have the conversations and plan them into your cash flow forecast. So you, you take that worry away. All right. So we're moving on to the gray boxes now, which is the, the tactics that we can employ. So number 14 in this list is supplier management. Uh, that quote there is extremely powerful. At this moment, you find out who your friends are. And ideally in a really good business, our suppliers should be our friends. You noticed uh, about eight, nine years ago, a massive change in Marks and Spencers and the way they manage their suppliers from, from cutting them to death through to cultivating them because basically suppliers bail us out when we're in the mess. So the, the, there's an opportunity now to work with suppliers to come up with solutions. Have conversations with suppliers about what you're trying to achieve. And if you're finding a supplier at the moment who is not that helpful, who is being uh, difficult to deal with, it start. Time now to start thinking about changing those suppliers. 
Think about the relationship to the suppliers and the way that we should think about the relationship with the customers. And now's a really good time to start that. Great. Anything you want to add on that, Mark? Well, I, only, yeah, absolutely, yeah. You usually it, have something yeah. to say that you well, want to Really? No. Yes, you do. Uh, have an opinion. Really? No. <laughs> um, it's usually right, Mark. I'll give it to that. You too, uh, so yeah, delay payment. If you can delay payment yeah. by agreement, yeah. then try Absolutely. and do that. You know, yeah. talk to your suppliers, and, and if you can make an arrangement with your suppliers by agreement, by mutual consent, to come to arrangements, then then do that. Absolutely, do that, and collaborate with your partners. Yeah, Tr treat your suppliers as your partners. See how you can work together. See what you can do together to solve problems. You know, collaboration is going to be really key right now. You know, we we often talk. Um, about you know a prisoner's dilemma or game theory uh, if you know anything about that or you've seen us talk about it basically in simple terms or layman's language it's about seeking a win-win mm -hmm. you know it is proven in economic law mm -hmm. that when you seek a win-win you know i win you win in a negotiation actually the outcome for both of you will always be better so this is not about win-lose or lose-win right now you, you've just reminded me of something actually Mark. i know we're looking in terms of time we've um, got Five more points to go through. Um, just, I thought it'd be worth mentioning, with the staff that's working in the events company that I, I mentioned, um, on Tuesday I met with them and negotiated a potential wage cut. So I said to them, look, we're gonna run this for three months, then I may come to you and may negotiate with you, not impose on you a wage cut. Now I know they're not suppliers, they're staff, but this is the kind of conversation. The response was really fantastic. They said, that would be completely reasonable. And I then said in uh, three months later, we'll get through the six month period that I've, we've done the emergency plan for. Then when times get good next year, I'll pay you double the wage cut that, that you took. Um, that kind of, can you do me a favor now Brilliant. because I'll do Brilliant. a favor with you later. Um, it works with some people. So use that with suppliers as well at work as well as staff. Absolutely, well done. It's just about being flexible and supportive right now. Okay, number 15. this is a key one. Uh, if I was kind of putting this in the order, this would probably be, be number, number one. Number, number, well, number one or number two. <laughs> Cash will probably come number one, right? Oh, yeah, this yeah. probably be number, number two. And actually, in my profile, I'm also a kind of a, a detailed planner. Yeah. So I would say, though, um, look, panicking is going to get you absolutely nowhere right now. Um, planning, planning, panicking is not helpful. So get it down on paper. Create a plan. Plan, plan, plan. Plan for the next quarter. Yeah, plan for the next 90 days. Come and join us next Tuesday on our, uh, as I've mentioned, if you, do, if you weren't here at the beginning, there's a 90 day planning workshop that we're gonna run online. I'll send out the details after this. Mm. Come and create a plan with us mm, for absolutely. the next 90 days. Yep. And that's totally on us. And we just want you to do that to make sure you get through this. Yep. Okay? And you mentioned the daily planning, Mark, that was something else. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So look, the next thing is, in addition, in addition to creating a plan, you have to take decisive action, okay? So have a 90-day plan, have a daily plan. Have a daily plan for three things that you are going to deliver every day that are going to make a fundamental difference to your business in one way or another. You know, you've got to stay productive. You've got to make stuff happen. Having little successes every day will be great for your confidence. Yeah, we need to stay confident right now. So let's go and do three things every day that give you strategic confidence, okay? So take, take decisive action, all right? 16, Mark. Think about delivery. Um, here's the basic principle. Forget about customers coming to us, we've got to go to, to them. So physically, if we can, door to door. Um, electronically, if we have to, or by phone. We have to take initiatives now to travel uh, to our customers instead of if we, if we traditionally have people coming to us is there any way that we could say say you run a yoga studio and how do you go to them mm. answer you video some yoga stuff and you mail it to them um, you all know that you're way ahead of the game on this but think really clearly about taking what you give to your client to them rather than asking them to come to you to get it Absolutely. This is about shape shifting. It's about thinking outside the box and, and thinking now at a time when we can't come into physical contact with people, how can you get your product to people in a totally different way? Yeah? How can you reshape what you've got and, and use the current uh, environment that you have to get products out to people? All right. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to shut up on this slide because Mark will talk about this forever. <laughs> I promise you. He's right. right. He's I right. promise you. Right. Absolutely right. So look, Look, more than anything else, double your marketing at Absolutely. least. 
Yeah, invest, invest for the future, increase your marketing, be visible, be seen. Um, people will remember you right now because a lot of people are stepping back. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are cutting because they, they think, they, they see their marketing as a cost rather than an investment, okay? So that means the ad space, you know, the, the environment where we're consuming all of these messages is changing. And there's much more opportunity to stand out and have it have cut through. Okay. So people will remember you if you up your marketing investment right now. Yeah. It's a great opportunity to get a bigger share of voice and to cut through. Okay. You've got to make a very quick suggestion here. Marketing businesses are of course getting hit by this too. So go to your marketing business and your marketing partner and say, look, I want to run a campaign. I want to do it now. I want to pay you later. Absolutely. And this kind of, um, Initiative will be able to get you some really, really good deals and discounts. We've mentioned, or you mentioned already, Mark, the free Facebook ads. Mm. If you think creatively about how do I market, get the content, put the content and the contact out there, and I think you'll find marketing agencies are a lot more flexible now to help you out. Absolutely, negotiate better deals. Yeah, yeah, negotiate better yeah. deals with your creative people and with the media owners. And by media owners, I people, you know, the, the people that have got the space that you want to go and get on. You know, the, fa the thing from Facebook is absolutely fantastic right now. Go and leverage it. So other people will be stepping back. So this is your opportunity to invest and step in. The other thing I'd just like to say on this is adapt your message. All right, we've touched on this earlier. There is a lot of irrelevant yeah. messaging still going on. We're a week into this crisis now, and some people are still putting stuff out that is not relevant and not mm. adapted to the mm. environment that we're facing. Mm. So think about the messages that you're putting out. Change them, mm. make them environment, make them make them relevant, and adapt them to the environment that we're now. All right. Number eighteen. Um, this is predictable. You probably knew this one was coming, but uh, this is a huge familiarity in ourselves and comfort, and the people we work with will change itself. Don't be scared of it. Embrace it. This is this is what life's about. There is a uh, a constant flow of change in life. We love it to be predictable and love it to make us rich doesn't do that. Life doesn't do that. And as soon as we're comfortable that life doesn't do that, we simply sit and think about it. There's no problems. There's only, as one of my uh, close friends has often said, you haven't got a problem until you haven't got an answer. Then you've got a problem. So we're smart enough, all of us, to think about answers in our lives, not problems. So change is going to happen. Lead change in your market area and think about the next step. And this is actually a very, very good open door opportunity to make change happen. Leaner, meaner, slicker. Now we're facing the need to do it. Let's let's go ahead and do it. That's what I was going to say. Isn't it? Absolutely, no, that, that's great, Mark. You know, question everything. Absolutely, question everything right now. And you know, think things that we uh, thought that were unthinkable or yeah. imaginable yeah. a week ago are now the new normal. Mm. Okay. Mm. You know, nobody expected a week ago for all of our school our schools to be closing tomorrow. You know, our children will probably not go back to school now until September. There is every likelihood of that. You know, that raises a whole load of problems in itself. Now, there are lots of other things. You know, there was speculation on the news this morning that there could be a lockdown in London from tonight, or certainly by the weekend. So, um, so um, sorry, I've just seen Mark's comment on chat, and it really threw me. Oh, right, sacred God, sacred cows make the finest burgers. <laughs> Whoa, I like that one. What a great one. Okay. Yeah. So there are no sacred Mark, cows, that's, right? That's a good one, Mark. There, 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 are, there are no sacred cows. Um, so, you know, anything could happen. Expect the unexpected. Okay, be open-minded to that uh, and know that that possibility could happen. Can I add one, uh, a very smart, given the time, it's really, really fast. Uh, the general population will be very, very worried in change and they like security. And if in your product set, you could offer uh, a product set going forward that gives a predictable security, uh, you'll find that it's got an easier acceptance by the, the public at the moment because the public is looking for safety. So if you can give something that's predictable, low cost, low risk, predictable as a solution, people will uh, connect with you because you're quite confident in change to bring security into change. Talk to me about that. Give us a quick phone call about how we might do that in different different areas. Good, Offering great. security is a big Absolutely. sell. Absolutely. Two great. points to go, Mark. Have well, hey, well, hey. Home run. Anybody knows my uh, my cue for Mark for moving on in time? If you have, let us know and we'll get you a bottle of wine if we get it right. And it's not this, right? It's not that. No. <laughs> it's not combing my hair, right? All right. Good. Okay. Point 19. No, it's not combing your hair, right? <laughs> he was in hair and makeup for ages before yeah, we came on this broadcast. Right. So, 
Um, 19, focus, focus, have a, have a daily plan, okay? Have three things, as I said a minute ago, three things that you will achieve every day. Some of you will have staff now that are co-located or mm. home-located. Make sure they all have a daily plan mm. as well. Absolutely. Yeah, keep them to, like, you know, the teams in your other businesses are all now co-located, yeah, right? Yeah. You've just got off a webinar with them for an hour, yeah. and you've basically, I overheard you going through what their, what their plans were, what their daily productivity was. Yeah. So keep people that are co-located super productive. Yeah, there are a lot of people that won't be used to working from home. Yeah, so you're going to need to check in with them regularly. You're going to make sure that they're delivering stuff. You're going to make sure that stuff's happening and you're getting output. Okay, normal day-to-day -day tasks will start to dry up. Yeah, because things are going to change. So as we said right at the beginning, start to sow the seeds now for when the metaphorical spring comes okay start to think about content that you can create systems processes intellectual property use your co-located people to do different tasks you know everybody at home yeah, in a, your home -located yeah your, your, yeah yeah co -located, co located people yeah that they, they they can be writing stuff creating content absolutely generating ideas use them for that um, and start preparing for the recovery because it will come you know wouldn't you be gutted in three months' time when the recovery comes if you're not ready for it? If you've spent three months just panicking. isolating and panicking. <laughs> you, yeah, that's a good point, Mark. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that brings us on to point 20. Surprise, surprise. Good time to all come. Be ready for them, right? You know, be ahead of the game. Think positive. You know, that's, that's a very easy thing to say and a very hard thing to do, right? So actually, positivity will come from taking decisive action. Decisive action will give you confidence. You will start to get some wins. You know, wins will breed confidence. And from the, the wins that you achieve, you will start to get momentum. Okay? And then you will start to thrive. Okay? So, you know, the whole thing was set up as, as survive and thrive, right? A big part of what we've gone through today is, is how you survive. But, you know, it looks from the example in China that it's about sort of 90 to 100 days on the health side. There will be a lag in terms of the economic output. There is support and resource out there to kind of get you through that period. But you need to be ready when the economic um, upswing happens that, that it will come. Now, hey, guess what? You know, where we started with all of this is that this did not come from a place of economic instability. The economies around the world were good. There was demand, okay? The demand will come back. And, and you know, we, we talked, if we come back to these metaphorical seasons about we've had a, had a summer, we've had a very short autumn. It looks like we're gonna have a winter of about 100 days. There is every likelihood, and all the predictions seem to be swinging this way at the moment, that we are gonna have a blazing summer. Okay, so you need to be ready for that. You need to make sure that you, you get through this period and that you're in the best possible place to um, make the most of that when that's Could I add, and actually, touch mark on the arm isn't, isn't the cue that you're going to get the bottle of wine for, it was something <laughs> else, but I just did that actually. Very, very quickly, um, in this time to be ready, what I could strongly recommend is two things, process manuals and marketing. Mm. Spend time building content, which is process manuals and marketing materials. Yeah. And uh, if, you, if you've got anything else to do for the moment, do that and that will help you be ready for, for the... Yeah, actually a really good point, right? So some of us may be laying staff off at the moment. Uh, if you haven't got a system or a process, where does, your, where does your system and process go? Where is it at the moment? It's in people's heads, yeah? So people are currently carrying around in their heads the process of how to run your business. That's not a good place to be. So you need to get those systems and processes down. You need to get them documented. Some of you guys, some of my current clients who are on here have done a brilliant job of creating systems and processes and documenting the way in which their yeah. business is run. Yeah, so if you haven't got that, go and get it. All right? Okay. So with that, I think we're well. on about time, right? Um, mindful that we haven't given any, there's been a lot of comment in the chat. Um, I'm probably going to stay on the line if you want to. If you want to ask questions, you're very welcome to do so. Before you go, let's just recap this, right? We're here to help. I hope you found this whole thing beneficial and you've got a lot out of it. Please, four things that you can do to get more help 
from us today. Go and join the Facebook group and um, we will be posting lots of um, tips, help, support, content and updates um, that you can go and get from the group right away. The next thing you can do is come and join us for our 90 day planning webinar on Tuesday. Come and join us again, I'll share the link for um, the update seminars, so the webinars that will be happening weekly. And if you need a 15 to 30 minute weekly check-in or whatever that needs to look like on a one-to-one -one basis, yeah, do um, ask. then do ask, do ask and we'll be putting that on the homepage as well. Anybody got any questions? Please, we'll keep it open for a minute or two. Shall we tell them what the queue was now? No, you gotta put, you gotta, you gotta send them in. You gotta send them in and then we, we'll announce in the Facebook group who's won the bottle of wine. Mm. <laughs> in fact, if more than one people, person gets it, we guarantee getting you each a bottle of wine. So, so yeah, comments, comments in the chat, please. Anything that you want to ask, um, please. We'll Any immediate questions, yeah, bang them through and then. We'll keep it open for about a minute. If you want to ask anything then. Okay, thank you all very much for attending. I know you've got huge crises to deal with, so. So thank you for joining us. Uh, your time's appreciated. I hope to chat to you soon. So let's keep it open. Um, uh, okay, questions coming in. Uh, stop kicking Mark to prompt him. No, 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 as well. So what you need to do is to go there, find that. And uh, actually, I think it's also on the banner. It's on the top of your personal profile. Facebook have put a thing up there as well at the moment, which is all about support during COVID-19. So you can go and have a look for that. Um, uh, Michael has made, Michael Roberts has made a great comment about, um, about disc profile. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if you'd like a disc profile being done, we can help you. If you don't know what a disc profile is, it's about understanding what your personality type is and how you relate with other people. So um, we can provide that to people. We're very happy to do it. Just get in contact. This also covers how you deal with crisis situations and what behaviours are better to deal with those situations. And it can be used for your teams as well. Mm -hmm. Matt says we should be a metre apart. We are. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's two metres, actually. Yeah, right? I think you might be two right. Yeah. We'd have to put the camera in the next county if we wanted to be two, <laughs> two metres apart. Okay, lots of thank yous. I don't think there's any more questions coming in. Lots of people saying how useful it's been, which is great. So um, probably going to wind it up there. Uh, thanks very much, everybody. We'll see you in the Facebook group. We'll see you at 90 day planning on Tuesday and we'll see you here next Thursday. All right, good luck, stay strong, be confident, be dynamic, be energetic, create a plan, manage the cash. We'll see you soon.